Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our live stream of evening prayer from Mr. Michael and All Angels Facebook page. As we bring an end to this day, the Feast of the Holy Cross. Welcome to all who have joined us. We begin our service on page 60 with the opening sentence for Passion Tide. God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Page 362. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God our Saviour and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We see the prayer of intention. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Let us say the canticle, Christ our Passover. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin, and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So let us take a moment of silence and allow God to bring to mind those things which we have done that were not pleasing to Him, and also those things which we ought to have done that we did not do. So, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. As we say, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so, uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from their sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So welcome to those who have just joined us. We continue to celebrate the peace of the Holy Cross. And we will have our office hymn at this time. Hymn number 151, CPWI 151, Beneath the Cross of Jesus, 151. <coughs> Beneath the cross of Jesus, 
I fain would take my stand. The shadow of a mighty rock within a weary land. A home within a wilderness, a rest upon the way. From the burning of the noontide heat and the burden of the day. Upon the cross of Jesus, mine eye at times can see the very dying form of one who suffered there for me. And from my stricken heart with tears, to wonders I confess, the wonders of redeeming love and my own worthlessness. I take a cross by shadow for my abiding place. I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of his face. Content to let the world go by, to know no gain or loss. My sin for self, my only shame, my glory on the cross. Amen. So we turn to our psalm. Our psalm for this evening's office, Psalm 118, found on page 625, Psalm 118, on page 625, that we bring an end to the Feast of the Holy Cross. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. I called to the Lord in my distress, the Lord answered by setting me free. The Lord is at my side, therefore I will not fear. What can anyone do to me? The Lord is at my side to help me. I will triumph over those who hate me. It is better to rely on the Lord than to put any trust in flesh. It is better to rely on the Lord than to put any trust in rulers. All the ungodly encompass me. In the name of the Lord, I will repel them. They hem me in. They hem me in on every side. In the name of the Lord, I will repel them. They swarm about me like bees. They blaze like a fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I will repel them. I was pressed so hard that I almost fell, but the Lord came to my help. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. 
I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. The blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. Form a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You may or may not have recognized that psalm as this um, Sunday psalm and also at other times during Holy Week. It speaks about the Lord riding into the ride in, in triumph. It also speaks about, sorry, not riding in tribe. It speaks about, it, it mentions the words, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we know that those were the words that were said when Jesus rode triumphantly into Jerusalem. And so we continue with our first lesson. From the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. As we welcome those who have just joined us. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took up its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, 
and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and his. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let us see the canticle, God's plan of salvation. On page 50, page 56. God's plan of salvation on page 56. We welcome those who have just joined us. We bring an end to the Feast of the Holy Cross. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with all the spiritual blessings of heaven. God chose us in Christ before the world was made to be holy and blameless and to live by his love in his presence. God planned it through Jesus Christ to bring us to himself as his children, that we might praise the glory of his grace, his free gift to us and the beloved. In Christ we gain redemption, through his blood our sins are forgiven, our which is the grace of God. So we turn to our second lesson from the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, beginning at verse 17. First Peter, chapter 3, verses 17 to 22. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to do than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered. Sorry, I will begin again. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited, patient, waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and the baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made 
subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So my brothers and sisters, as we continue to commemorate Holy Cross Day, we think about how sometimes upside down and back to front our Christian faith can can seem. We hear Jesus talking about being persecuted for him. If we are persecuted for him, for his sake, we are blessed. We also hear him talking about hating those who are closest to us and who are most dear to us and who we should respect the most and honor the most if we want to follow him. And now we celebrate Holy Cross Day because even though crucifixion was one of the most shameful, painful and cruel ways to put someone to death, we glory as we as Christians glory in the cross of Christ. And we know that it for the Jews crucifixion was a case and it is it was written in the scriptures in the Old Testament that those who die by being hung in a tree or being crucified are cursed. And so this is why Jesus' death on the cross was a stumbling block many Jews they could not accept him as the Messiah because of the way he died and there were other ways that Jesus could have died we read in the scriptures that at one time I think it was in Luke's gospel that they wanted to hold him and throw him over a cliff but he slipped through them and escaped and at other time they wanted to stone him to death and it was not his time, it was not his hour had not yet come. And so in none of those neither of those ways, those other ways that he, he could have died, those were just would have just been murder. Neither of them would have meant a sacrificial death for him. Because crucifixion he had to have a trial and he had to be sentenced to death by an official and so crucifixion was kind of an official death it was it was a public pronouncement that he was quote unquote a criminal and it it's, it was a public pronouncement even though it was incorrect that he deserved to die like this because he did something worthy of and so that is where the sacrifice comes in because we know that Jesus was innocent of all the charges that they brought against him. And we know that Pilate could have released him because he had the power to do so. But if he had done so, Pilate himself might have been put to death by Caesar. And so Jesus was sacrificed not only for our sin but for Pilate's skin you could see. And so this is why crucifixion was the well this is why crucifixion was is a sacrifice because Jesus died innocently and he paid the price for all our sins. And this is the way God wanted it. This is the only way that God would have it because we needed to be redeemed. Uh, in the, the Old Testament reading, we see that Adam and Eve, when they discovered that they had lost their innocence, they made loincloths for themselves, but they used they used leaves. But we we didn't read on we didn't read up to that part. But we saw that when God came and spoke to them and pronounced the judgment 
that he made God made loin clothes out of animal skin and so that was the beginning of this symbolism of redemption to sacrifice for for there to be animal skin an animal had to die and to see that even from the beginning what we do to try to save ourselves and protect ourselves is never good enough the loin clothes made out of fig leaves or bush or whatever it is was not good enough it had to be replaced by something more durable more lasting more meaningful so god used animal skin so from the beginning we see that there is no redemption without sacrifice and when we think about if Jesus had died by either stoning or being thrown off a cliff that way he would have been thrown down he would have been down but it's, it's when he was on the cross he was lifted up he was lifted high so that everyone could see it was a it was a public thing and even though it was a disgraceful way to die it meant that even those who did not know him or who were not aware of what he had done with the disciples and like for instance a visitor or a stranger um, passing through Jerusalem at the time because crucifixion was it was a very public thing and the people were the, the criminals or the victims the the they were put in, in pub, public places. He was crucified on a hill. I mean, so that everyone can see. You know, you, you, everyone can see what what happens on what what is there on a hill. So it was a very public thing, and so if it meant that those who just didn't even though didn't know what was happening could look and see. And even though they, they would not have understood or may not have understood why he had to die, it must have made them contemplate or it must have made them you know, think about what did this man do to deserve this punishment? And if they had asked around, you know, well, why was he killed? And they would have found out, well, these two were killed for being thieves and murderers and insurrectionists. But this one, well, it, it's unclear why he was, this one was put to death. It's unclear why Jesus was put to death. So if a stranger passing through would be able to contemplate on the message of the cross. And so this is why Jesus was, would say, and when he is lifted up, he would draw all men to himself, because you know you you, you, you tend to want to, to ponder on why someone dies innocently and needlessly, right? And in the case of Jesus, you would think about well, and you will maybe they will ask questions, and they will speak to those who went about with him and they will learn more about him so that he could draw people to himself even in his death even in this shameful uh, excruciating painful way that he that god chose for him to die and so that is why we celebrate the cross because the cross while it is a stumbling rock for Jews and foolishness to the Greeks or the wise, those who think themselves wise, it symbolizes victory and redemption for us because we know why we know why Jesus died. And so now we look to the cross. We look to the cross for our redemption, for our salvation, and we look to the cross in gratitude because we know that we cannot save ourselves and even though God chose this this way to do it 
we are to be eternally grateful for him for what he has done and we are to be eternally grateful that Jesus was obedient to the end to suffer this kind of death as the scripture says even death on a cross the stoning and being thrown off the cliff would have been much less painful but God chose this way and Jesus obeyed Jesus let God's will be done so that we can be saved the Lord be with you So we turn to page 67. Let me see. So we did that. So it's page 69 as we see the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, O Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and his servants with knowledge and a true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us, and through us, your will may be done. So we turn to page 188, as we say the collect for the Holy Cross, or Holy Cross Day, page 188. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. Mercifully granted we, who glory in the mystery of our redemption, may have grace to take up our cross and follow him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Light, no darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Grant, Lord, that we may be faithful to you without turning aside, worship you without growing weary, serve you without failing, diligently seek you, happily find you, and forever possess you, the one and only God, blessed forever and ever. Amen. So in a moment of silence, I invite you to offer your personal petitions to God.
Lord in your mercy. Yeah, I'll pray. So we continue in prayer. We thank God for the reopening of a new school team. Continue to pray for all students, teachers, principals, administrators, and parents. We pray that our children will continue to learn in a safe and secure environment. We pray that those who are lacking basic um, school supplies will be gifted, will be granted, will be relieved of their lack. We pray for those who are a little behind in the curriculum. We pray that they will get the extra help and tuition and support that they need. We pray for those who have to travel long distances to and from school. We pray that you will sustain them and give them the strength to concentrate on their studies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the protection of those who are most vulnerable, for both students and all, young children, young adults, teenagers. We pray for the protection of those who are being targeted, either for illicit or and uns and unsafe and sordid acts or for human trafficking. Lord, we ask for protection upon all potential victims. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for an end to the scourge of human and organ trafficking. We pray for an end to human trafficking for sexual activity and we pray for the protection of those who are being targeted and those who are being groomed. We pray that you will release them and that you will relieve them from the snare of their predators. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for an end to the crime and violence in our land. We pray for an end to the importation of illegal drugs and guns in our country. We pray for a change of heart for those who are who perpetrate violence against others, for those who enjoy seeing others suffer, for those who enjoy being brutal to others, we pray for that they will encounter your love for God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the souls of, of those who have died violently in, in traumatic circumstances, that they will find eternal rest and peace. We pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones through violence, we pray that you will comfort them. We also pray for an end to domestic violence. We pray for all kind, the end of all kinds of abuse, physical, sexual, emotional, verbal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those who are sick and suffering, for those who are about to undergo surgical or medical procedures, for those who are recovering from surgical or medical procedures, we pray for the healing, their healing and wholeness. We also pray for those suffering with mental illness. We pray that you will remove the stigma. We pray that others will come to understand that they there's the need to do so understand those who are in need of treatment. We pray for compassion and understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
going before you knew the leaders of our church we lift up our bishop claude we ask you to strengthen him as he is accompanying his wife who is ill and we also pray for her healing we will pray for them both we pray that you will guide him that you will help him to endure what he has to endure and you lift up his wife for your healing and comfort Lord in your mercy hear our prayer thank you for those who celebrate birthdays and other special anniversaries at this time we pray that you will continue to bless them strengthen them give them health and prosperity Lord in your mercy hear our prayer Lord Jesus, we ask you to hear our prayers. We pray and we lift up these petitions to you, those we have asked, and those in the hearts of those listening. We lift them up to you for your blessing. And we pray that you will grant these petitions according to your will. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So before we end our worship, let us sing hymn number 147, When I see the wondrous cross, CPWI 147. the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you, my brothers and sisters, for joining us as in Michael and Old Angels for the service of evening prayer. You continue to have a pleasant, peaceful, and restful night. There is complaint with the Holy Trinity Cathedral at 9 p.m. 
to feel free to join them and continue to take care of yourselves be careful be vigilant be diligent remember we still have COVID around us and take care of yourself and each other have a pleasant peaceful night and until we see each other again